Hi everybody, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, we have some very lucky tourists who just happen to be cruise ship staring and watching when, yep, their boat sank from beneath them. <laughs> Uh, get into that story. We have the first ship of the season arriving for the Alaska season and some changes. If you're going to Alaska this year and next year, there will be some changes, especially next year, that you should be aware of. We also have that story about all those passengers who were left behind from a cruise ship because they overbooked the cruise ship. And finally, Norwegian Cruise Line is issuing a warning to passengers joining a cruise ship tomorrow. Don't arrive too early because the ship's not going to be there. So tomorrow is kind of an unusual situation. We have the Norwegian Escape arriving in New York City to do a repositioning cruise over to the Mediterranean to begin the summer season in the Med. Well, that's not so unusual, except they are saying that they are going to be arriving late. Now, it is coming actually from Port Canaveral. The trick is there are no passengers on board. And the reason there's no passengers on board is because if they place passengers on board, then they would have to stop in a foreign country coming from Orlando to New York. There's no foreign country to stop in. They'd have to head over to the Bahamas or Barbados or something and then head back and that would take longer. So they decided to sail this ship empty for a two day sailing. And so it will be arriving and because it's, arri it's sailing empty, the ship can travel faster and doesn't have to make a stop in a foreign country because there's no paying passengers. So this kind of gets rid of that situation, but by doing so, it normally takes a little longer than two days to get to New York, so they will be arriving at 11. 11 a.m. will be the arrival time, not the normal 6 a.m. that cruise ships are normally pulling into the dock. So if you have a cruise on the Norwegian Escape tomorrow, please do not show up at 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock in the morning hoping to get on board because the ship won't even be at the terminal yet. Leaving time when they leave New York should be the exact same time because they don't have to disembark passengers, get the cabins ready. The cabins will be ready for you when you get on the ship. I love it when that happens. So it's like going on the very first sailing of a very first ship for the first time. Cabins are always ready for you. Beautiful situation there. Speaking of Norwegian Cruise Line, Norwegian Cruise Line has been the first cruise ship this year to kick off the Alaska season. First off, it arrived in Victoria, Canada, and uh, that was the first ship. It was the Norwegian Bliss was on that route, and then it headed off into Alaska, and lo and behold, Coming up into Juneau this week, it will be the first cruise ship all by itself arriving in Juneau. If you've ever been on an Alaska cruise, you know you are very rarely the only ship in Juneau. <laughs> so it's kind of going to be a very unique experience for those passengers on board. And that kicks off the Alaska season for 2024. Now, Juneau has also been working with the cruise lines to start mitigating the tourism that's there. They had almost 1.7 million visitors last year alone. They're expecting the same amount this year, but they've been working with the town council and the town there to spread out the ships more for this year. For instance, they're on a normal Tuesday, which seems to be the turnaround day for a lot of ships. They can have well over 20,000 passengers visiting the town and they say the busiest season this year, the busiest day of Tuesday will be 17,000. So they've mitigated quite a bit of the percentage of people who will be in town. And next year, they are limiting Alaska in Juneau to a maximum of five cruise ships. That's right. So cruise ships are already working with them. They're looking at moving some ships to other cruise ports. If you notice this year, I was looking to try and book a 2025 Alaska cruise for myself. And you'll notice that Ketchikan, Juneau and Skagway not too many ships are doing all three. A lot of them are going up to Haines now or Sitka, and they're only doing 
one or two of those popular ports as the cruise lines work with the town of Juneau and others to spread out the cruise ships and have a less impact on the population who live there even though the vast majority of the population relies on that tourism to survive the town shall we say and they're also going to be expanding some of the excursions and things that you can do they're hoping to invest in a new gondola system up in Juneau for people to head further away from Juneau and spread out the traffic even more that's what happens when town councils actually work with the cruise lines instead of just fighting the cruise lines they actually get results done and it benefits both parties Next, let's talk quickly about the Genting Dream as they had some passengers arrive at the cruise ship. They had printed out their boarding pass, they had their confirmations in hand, and when they arrived at the cruise terminal, Genting Dream, yeah, they said, sorry, there's no cabins for you. Um, we oversold. We oversold our cabins. This is not the first time. This time it was a few dozen people who were left at the cruise port when they actually told the passengers to go and wait in a waiting room and slowly they came in and took two or three from that group but everybody else had no cabin and they were obviously offered their money back and then they were told that the next cruise they book with them they will be upgraded to either a balcony or a galaxy suite depending on the cabin that they had booked uh, if they chose to travel with Genting Dream one more time. It's not the first time this happened. The last time this happened was in 2022 and over a hundred passengers arrived at the cruise terminal to find out they were overbooked. This uh, cruise line tends to have this happen just a little too often for my liking. Would make me very, very nervous booking with them when this kind of situation happens. And the only compensation you get after all the traveling and everything you do is, well, your next time you book with us, we'll give you, we'll give you a better cabin. Because if you look online at most major cab cruise lines, one of their offers often during the year is a free cabin upgrade. <laughs> so thanks for nothing, I guess, really, for Genting Cruise Line for that offer. And finally, we have a boat in Cozumel was sailing beside the Harmony of the Seas. Now, the Harmony of the Seas was not sailing. It was docked right there, so nothing was happening. That would cause anything to happen. But an eight passenger tour boat was taking a, you know, a stroll by the cruise ship just literally meters away, uh, like 15 meters, 10 meet meters away from the cruise ship when all of a sudden she started taking on water. And uh, yeah, it actually filled up pretty quickly and dumped all eight passengers into the water. All the other small boats around the area and the crew all helped in getting these passengers out of the water. Luckily, nobody was injured, nobody was too severely hurt, but the boat did sink right there in front of them. And it looks like it was a faulty bilge pump. I'm not a big small boat technical guy, but I'm guessing a bilge pump is the pump that sends the water out when it's getting into your ship. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, the water's getting into your ship and it's sunk, right? It's like your sub pump of your house. So, but the good news is nobody was injured. Everybody was okay. And it was a good thing that it was right close to a bunch of other ships and not further out to sea when this happened, when maybe there wasn't so many people around. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button till next time. Have yourself a safe and a great vacation.